It's pretty dope. I would have done it better though. What's going on? Yeah. What's going on, bro? How are you? Doing good about yourself, man. Pretty well. Just waiting to see. Um, just waiting for a few people to come in. Sounds good. Sounds good. Thank you for having us do this, man. Appreciate it. No problem. Well, I guess uh, we'll start while we'll, I'm waiting for anybody to come in. Um, well, I have a few fan questions, then I'll get into the harder stuff. Cool. Okay. All right. Fan question is for um, Natalie asks um, the song Forgotten. Uh, what was your input? Um, how do you think of that song? How did that song come about? So I, um, it's actually probably the longest song we've ever had because I've actually had that song for about almost 10 years, possibly longer than that. Um, originally, the, the, the way that it came about is that I grew up um, in a divorced uh, household. Um, okay. I didn't see a lot of my dad growing up. Um, being the only male born child in that relationship, you know, it's different how you have that relationship with your kids, but being a boy and needing a father to help you go through the pains and teach you through life. That's really what that song is about. It's about, you know, wanting you to really care about me as a kid or any kid. It's just about a cry. It's a cry out loud to all the kids who are growing up without their parents and, you know, and how difficult it can be to not have them in your lives at certain points. Another question was how you got your name of the band. But I, it's Latin, isn't it? Yes, <laughs> part of it is for sure. You're right. So um, we, uh, we originally... Uh, had a name that was taken. Um, uh, we originally were called Torque, um, okay. like an engine. And um, basically, one day we went into the studio to rehearse, and we decided that that name was no longer viable for us to use. And we were just kind of thinking of ideas. Um, don't really remember who came up with the Nova. Uh, uh, but we definitely, two different people came out with Omega, and Nova, and it just kind of, you know, melted together because in Latin it kind of means new beginnings, right? In a way, it's what? Uh, new, a newer version star, actually. Yeah, oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that's that's really what it came about. Very nothing too fancy behind it, like all these bands that have like stories behind their name. Um, yeah, that's how it came about. <laughs> Now I'll start with the harder questions. The uh, what was the best advice you were ever given? Patience, patience, man. Patience is uh, when you're a musician. A lot of times, and you put so much hard work and effort into everything that you do, that a lot of times you want the response or the rewards to be reciprocated in a fast manner, where when you're a musician, you have to grind and keep on trying as much as you can and you're going to fail, but it's just how you deal and cope with the failure. What really helps you grow. That's what I would say, at least. Anything okay. else, guys? No, no just yeah. resilience. <laughs> resilience, yeah, man. How do you, for somebody that's never listened to you before, how do you explain your music? And the energy of the band. It's kind of hard. It's like you combine the vocals, the vocalist of more of a 90s alternative band with the guitar section of All That Remains kind of thing, but kind of the lighter version of it. So, yeah, we, we, uh, we all have different um, influences. You know, we all come from very different backgrounds. Um, we have your metal heads, we have people that listen to pop, we have people that listen to R&B, people that listen to hard rock, alternative, and those all kind of just 
melted in a way. Like, so what happens is, is that I bring something to the table that Chris doesn't bring to the table, but he brings something to the table that I don't bring to the table, which then meshes our personalities and our musical styles into one. So for people that have never listened to us before, um, I would say to give us a try because it's really hard for me to sit down and tell you, hey, we sound like you know breaking benjamin so breaking benjamin fans come and see us or we sound like disturbed so disturbed fans come see us or slipknot it's because it's not really gonna match to that description so it's just really more of like a give us a shot because we're kind of all those genres and all those people that you like kind of put together into one melting pot okay since you brought up slipknot what is your take on the time kelly uh, yeah, a tire. That's a fake yeah. beef. Honestly, man. <laughs> no, beef, honestly, yeah. look. Respect has to be given where respect is due. If, you know, if you're not willing to respect the people that have paved the way for you, man, like, what are you doing? You know what I'm saying? All these people tore their asses off touring for so many years, creating a name for the scene, make, making it mainstream because before Slipknot, and bands like that and corn and such, you know, metal and new metal and all that stuff was not as mainstream. So this is, they oh. brought it onto the daylight. You see what I'm saying? And in, in a kind of way. So um, regardless, period, you should not be talking smack about any band, especially to your fans trying to create any beef and Slipknot are stand up people from what I've seen. And they don't really deal with the pettiness of Machine Gun Kelly because it's already, this is the second feud. First with Eminem, now with Slipknot. So it looks like he's just trying to gain fame, I guess. Yeah, it's a good way to keep your name in the media, I suppose. Yeah. Sorry, I'm looking at my notes here. No worries. That's fine. I'll look at mine. Okay. What do you want to leave as your legacy? You guys have thought about that? I haven't even thought about that. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Honestly, man, I uh, at the end of the day, just like every other band, we just want to be given a chance. We want to be listened to. And we we feel that if you give us a chance, you will not regret it. So I guess for my legacy is me personally. I would like to be what inspired me growing up. I would like to be an inspiration to future musicians to then, you know, create even more styles in the future or take inspiration to write their own music. Just like uh, people like Howard Jones inspired me or pretty much any of the musicians that I listen to or any other bands like El Nino, Killer's Confession, all those bands to me personally were an inspiration. So for me personally, um, I would like to try to be an inspiration uh, or some sort of, um, I guess, um, uh, I like to help fuel yeah. the next generation. Right, that's really what it is. Yeah, which I am because I made him. So <laughs> he's the next generation. So I think I completed my legacy. <sighs> so yeah, we have a father son duo in the band. Yeah, I knew that already. Yeah. Oh, oh, there we go. <laughs> Not everybody does though. <laughs> I know. I'm just saying. <laughs> All So how was the um, the show at the pit a couple nights ago? Oh, man, that was insane. Honestly, like it was uh, the last show of the year at the pit. Um, amazing lineup, man! It was so stacked. It was uh, us, Dead Reckoning out of Georgia, which that band is killer. You got to check them out. Inferior Design, man, those guys are killer, and they're a hometown band from the pit. Adam and those guys really bring it, and they brought it that show. Uh, you have Haymaker, which is a heavyweight. Man, those guys bring it every single time. It's insane how much energy that performance has. And, of course, you got Dying Oath, which what is there to say, man? They're freaking amazing. Mindy, Gage, Josh, both Ryans, Jacob, those guys bring it every single day in that they go into a stage and day out and they're the sweetest people you could ever meet too so it was kind of like a family reunion to be honest with you everybody was having fun supporting each other uh, we took a big ass group picture with everybody that attended it you know it was just really fun man it was 
tight knit. Yeah, it was really cool. Really, really. I would love to do that again, man. It was definitely one for the books. It was like basically a big party with all our friends. Yeah, pretty much. We, we really support all those guys, and they support us. And, uh, you know, so it, it's just fun and comfortable. So even even when we're on stage, because we're so used to being around. We, we play with that. Geez, I, can't, I don't even know how many times we play with Dino and, and will be coming up, you know, in the future. And Haymaker, too. So it, it's just so comfortable to be around those guys and Gales. They're all they are really good people. Very good oh, people, man. Lovely. Sorry. Mindy, amazing, Josh, everybody. Honestly, just everybody. If you could if you could open for anybody, who would it be? I think that would be different for each one of us, to be honest <laughs> with you, because we all have Definitely. such a different <laughs> so I guess we can go each one. Who would you want to open up for, Garrett, if you had uh, a choice? It's unrealistic, but probably Metallica. Metallica. <laughs> That'd be pretty sweet. See, uh, me, I'd like to open up for uh, one of my all-time favorite bands. They're called El Nino. I've already opened for them in the past, but doing it again it would be awesome, dude. It's just one of those amazing bands that you just want to play with. Adam would say Gojira. No, yeah, Gojira Adam sure. would totally say Gojira. Would say yeah, Gojira. Gojira is his favorite band in the world. What about you guys? Probably All That Remains. That would be great. Yeah. That would be freaking awesome. Oh. Yeah, all the remains are born of Osiris. Yeah, that would be They're freaking awesome. Man. Me and Chris are the heavy ones in the band. We like, <laughs> we like the stuff that he does too, though. Yeah, okay. that's true. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> but me and Chris like like everything really, really heavy. And then we got Nestor, who's like baby metal. <laughs> I just like <laughs> melody, man. I just like melody. That's all. <laughs> Uh, All right. I like a lot of eighty stuff too. Not not the glam crap, but like Maiden and King Diamond and stuff. So I'm really, really big on having everything be melodic, which actually suits him very well. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna add a fun question here. What um what female song that you'll sing full chested? Man, female song, dude. I'm a big fan of Amy Lee, dude. Amy Lee is just insane. Uh, she has a song called My Immortal, which is insane. That's the one I would say that I would probably try to sing the most. That or Hailstorm. Hailstorm is insane, too. Yeah, That's what I would think that I would try to go for if I was trying to sing a female-led song. Are you thinking about doing any covers? We actually uh, will be dropping a surprise cover that we did. Um, not going to go too much into detail, but it is not your regular cover. It's actually not a sung cover. It's, uh, can we say at least a little hint of what it is, kind of? Yeah. It's based on a TV show. Okay. Yeah, it's a TV show that a lot of adult people enjoy <laughs> and people that are adults and they swim. Covers are tough for us. <laughs> <laughs> it was a hint. <laughs> People there are adults and swim. Adult okay. and swim. <laughs> Covers are tough for us as a band because we like so much different stuff and each person likes different things. So trying to we do do a cover of uh Man in a Box. Yeah. yeah. We used to do a cover. Um, yeah. but we don't do it as much anymore. Yeah. Because a lot of our sets have been a little bit shorter times and we're trying to get our originals in there as much as we can right we, we've just been writing a lot of original music so finding a cover has been a little difficult for us as far as live sets i guess but we've done men in the box several times that's an easy cover the whole idea with the covers is to keep it easy and so you can rule it's almost like a break through the set if that makes sense okay Dude, his beard is that what he's? Is he running his hands through his? Oh, see, okay. It's a nice beard. It is a nice beard. Thank you. <laughs> I grew up myself. What, all by yourself? All by oh, myself. Oh, hold on, pull over, pull over a little more this way. Look at this beard. I am. Beard as well. <laughs> I'm jealous. <laughs> I can admit that. <laughs> I've only been growing it out just about a year now. 
about a year. Yeah. <sighs> Real man would have had a dollar already. <laughs> <laughs> Real men who don't have beards don't talk a shot of shit about them really happy. <laughs> So what so what bands do you like that you love that everybody else hates? Man, that's a good one. I like Nickelback. I like Stained. Stained is a great band. I don't hey, know why people you know about what, Nickelback. Man? Nickelback's a great band. They're they I have I have my reasons why I don't hey. like it. <laughs> What's on a uh, Joey's head? That's what everyone's trying to figure I out. I love Creed. I hear it's his ass. I don't know why. I like Creed, man. I like Creed too. I like Creed. Yeah. Creed's cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's fun. <laughs> so they were boring until I came in, right? Is that what the deal was going on? I apologize, B and eight. Some asshole told me that this didn't start until three, uh, seven thirty. Yeah, and it started at seven thirty. Yeah. I yeah. was here at seven twenty-eight. No, you were not. That's <laughs> like, why would you be there two minutes before? You Maybe seven twenty-eight. Let me in. Listen. <laughs> I, know I know you're used to saying that to a lot of people. Let me in. <laughs> <laughs> Don't work like that over here, buddy. <laughs> Worked with your mom. Mm. Oh. Oof. Yes, oh. it did. His mom is hot. He should show you a picture of her. She's fucking hot. I don't care how old she is either. You know that if he stands directly outside during like a full moon, you can reflect the moon on his bald head? <laughs> <laughs> look, 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 look at this. Come on. Yeah, look, look, look at that. He's not far behind me. <laughs> <laughs> See that? <laughs> See that? See, this is how we normally are. I don't know what was going on when I walked in, but this is how we are on stage, too. This is just... It's a little it worrying. That's great. A little worrying. I should have asked if I could curse. Well, we're live. It don't matter now. <laughs> Sometimes it's better to say sorry than to, than to ask for permission. Let me, let me squeeze down a little more. You guys can. I'm not I'm getting that close to you, dude. I wouldn't want you to. You just ask me to. You look like a giant <laughs> dildo. Makes sorry. Worried that you asked me to get close to you. Anyways, I apologize. He uh, he poked at the beer. <laughs> yeah, the big round chubby beer. It was actually fun. Love the beer. The dough boy. If you could, go, if you could go back in time and and write yourself a letter at age twelve, what would you write yourself? Go have kids. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, man, if I could write a letter to myself, I would tell me to bet on all the teams that won the Super Bowl. <laughs> I could be very rich right now. Start by, you know, you know, betting 20 bucks. Those 20 bucks turn into 40. Yeah. Jesus Christ, that's a lame answer. Bro, when I'm 12 years old, I'm not going to have more than 20 bucks. That's all right. You suck, man. We're, we're over it. We're past it. Garrett, you're next. I don't know that I have any advice. I don't, I'm only 21. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be like a year. Like... How about you, Chris? I mean, I tell him. Don't fucking throw away your video games that are worth hundreds of fucking dollars now. That's true. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I, you know what? No, I take it back. I would invest in no. face mask, like face mask stock, like you know, like or like hand sanitizer companies. I would invest a lot of money on that. Then everybody would be laughing at me. Oh, but I know about the future. So. <laughs> What if, what if the future changed though? Right. And then you did that, and then it was. Nah, he just let's, asked let's not, it, guys. Let's yeah, hijack the interview like we normally do. <laughs> we get into like random conversations. Yeah, I'm yeah. Sorry, with man. each other. It's fine. <sighs> what would you do if you if you wrote yourself a letter when you were twelve? Yeah, see. What I do? Yeah. Make better choices. But, like, you have to be a little more specific. <laughs> like, you have to, like, write. Like, you can't just be, like, make better choices. <laughs> what the fuck does this mean? <laughs> Don't do drugs, kid. Or do more. 
At least Marshall. one specific thing. You have to name just one. Spe- it doesn't have to be private or anything. It's just one specific thing. Like, you know, I should have gassed up the car that one time I got stuck at the strip club or whatever. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Going to concerts, I always make sure I had earbuds. That's fair. Yeah, that's very fair. I still don't do that. Very fair. My ears are <laughs> destroyed. Yeah. I just bought a whole bunch. I'm going to see Corn and Stained on Sunday. Nice. How was that? Well, it didn't happen yet. No, I thought you said well, you went to see them, so you're gonna go see them. No, I'm going to. See, I bought. Oh, very bought nice. Them, so I'm going to see them. I was just with Pop Evil a couple nights ago. Very but, um, nice. That's awesome, dude. How would they do? They're okay. I mean, I only got to speak to Haley for a couple seconds before yeah. I had a look. Awesome. Very, awesome. Very, man. Very, very sweet girl. Awesome. We're open for Islander tomorrow night. That'll be fun. Scars remain. Fairytale Fury. We're really excited about that. That's pretty cool. I got uh, 10 10. I'm going to see Slipknot. So We're going to be there. Yeah, we're going to be there to go see Slipknot. Yep. Yeah, but we're going to see them 10 18. Yep. I believe it. they're coming with Kill Switch, Fever 333, and uh, Agent Orange. Yeah, we're really excited about yeah. that. Oh, I'm really excited about that because that's one of the Slipknot's one of the few bands I haven't seen live. Amazing. It'd be my second actually, time. I was actually doing a giveaway for those tickets on the channel. Very nice. Only two people entered. I was very shocked. Did they win? Wow, for real? For Slipknot tickets? Yep, I, I, I had to split the tickets. I had to color right now. Wow, that's nuts. Hey, it two very lucky awesome. people, though, man. They're going to get to see a hell of a show. That's the for only sure. Thing I- the funny thing, the only thing I asked was your best air guitar or your best scream. And yeah. I know a lot of people who were, had they known, man, jumped on that in a heartbeat. Well, I would have. I, I would have fucking jumped on that too, yeah. to be honest with you. <laughs> Can I still enter? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in Jersey, you wanna come, if you want to come to Jersey, I'll, I'll gladly uh, let you come with me. Where in Jersey are you? I'm in Central Jersey. Uh, the show, the show is actually in uh, Homedale, New Jersey. They're from New York, so they, they that's what they ask. Upstate. Okay, no, um, I'm Spotswood area. Okay, I know. I I have a roundabout idea where you're at. A lot of people diss Jersey, but a lot of Jersey's really pretty. <sighs> because you got to come up through Jersey to get to. Well, it's easier to come up through Jersey to get to, to the city. What part of New York are you from? Uh, Rochester. Okay. I'm originally from Brooklyn. Forget about it. I got a lot of family. We got a lot of family. I'm walking here. I'm walking here. Yeah, Paisan. Can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me? I'll ask another uh Song question, 21 Days, what was that about? So, funny thing about 21 Days, um, we actually wrote that song and recorded it in the studio completely, like just wrote from scratch all the way to the studio, all within three weeks. Therefore, that's what the name of the song is, 21 Days. But the meaning of the song is based upon not having to live up to... I guess kind of like what your ancestors or what you're kind of say, for example, you're part of this family that has so many expectations of you because of what your past family members may have accomplished or done. And they always have some sort of direction or outlook towards how your life is going to pan out. 21 days is about being you and creating your own path um, towards life. You know, wherever everybody has very, very different, uh, you know, experiences and having a laid out expectation of how your life is going to be is very um, absurd in my opinion. So this song is just about don't worry about what the expectations you have on your shoulders. Just be yourself and everything's going to be cool. I mean, maybe some people go to prison and shit. I mean, you might end up like John. So, I mean, you don't want to end up like you don't want to end up like John. That fucking sucks. Yeah. (laughs) Unless there's a full moon. (laughs) (laughs) 
you see the ancient aliens were waiting for John Todd before they were going to come back. <laughs> so you're working on a new music video soon, right? Yes, yes. Um, so we are working with Brando Jones Films um, out of South Carolina, man. The great stand-up people. Uh, they're awesome to work with. Uh, today, we actually filmed only part of the music video due to weather. Um, okay. But it's a great experience. Uh, we're going to reschedule the second part, which you know we'll be hitting you up to be in it too, hopefully. Um, basically, it's going to... Us as a band, we take our music very, very serious. You know, We really put a lot of hard work into everything that we write and we do. But we also consider Do ourselves to be take ourselves seriously. right we don't take ourselves as pe as people serious we are very lighthearted. we like to have fun you know whether that means making fun of ourselves or you know we just have a very good sense of humor and we want to make sure that that portrays to the people that listens to us as well so we'll make sure that this video is going to be something that people enjoy and have a good good all time to watching it so it should, hopefully it's going to be released this year if not it's going to be first thing next year but it's also going to be releasing one of our newer tracks that we just recorded too. And that three months after that, we'll be headed to make another music video. Mm -hmm. yeah. the We're trying time. to keep busy now. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is the time to do so. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, we, we are uh, very uh, excited how, how it's going to come out. We have a lot of ideas and we're finally getting to work, man. We got to catch up. <laughs> we got to catch up. We're not doing too bad for only playing out for about a year. I think we've made decent traction. Uh, it just takes time. You keep yeah. working at it. It definitely was hard to start the band, like mm -hmm. right in the smack middle of COVID. Yeah. Because we started as like a, like no, late November of 2019. So we played one show right as COVID was coming out. And then we got shut down for like a good eight months. <laughs> Right when the band was like first born too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it was, we really up It was my it was my favorite. Yeah, and we've only been really playing out for like a year, if that, if, if less that, than that. Yeah. yeah. And you all met on Craigslist, right? Yeah. No, no. Actually, I met his mother on Craigslist. <laughs> no, so uh, <laughs> me and him were. It in was the actually band. back page. Me and me and him were in the <laughs> band. I had found through a friend of this band that had past members, and then. We brought them in later on. We found him on Craigslist. I was um, selling my body. <laughs> Not successfully. Uh, and then Garrett. We and I don't know why. <laughs> look, at this, look at this big, sexy fucking man right here. Hey. I know I want to cut away. Hey, <laughs> uh, and then Garrett, uh, he basically responded to an ad we had put out. And another sex yeah. ad too, and a, which also didn't turn out very good either, as you can tell. He's really thin. So you know, bony. Don't ever look for sex on Craigslist, please, because this, this is, is what you get. This is what you get right here. <laughs> Adam, it was actually a drummer in another band that we that played we, out with. That actually, the one that show, show, the one show, oh, yeah, we got to the play one out. Show he was we a drummer out. in the other band. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> we felt like we needed to make a change, not to say anything bad about the drummer we had before. We love him to death. But uh, we thought that the, the music style was just too different. And we were we had the opportunity. We went through another drummer who was also actually very excellent. But again, it was a stylistic issue. And then we were able to pick up Adam, which that which he is. It brought, it brought us to a whole different level. Honestly, with the core that we have now, we've really been together for... Not even including you, honestly. With you, we've been together for about three, four months, I would say. Yeah. But with this lineup that we have, I would say we're no older than like six, seven months, yeah. to be honest with you. So, yeah. If you could, if you can have your own super group, who would you want in it? Jeff Loomis. Uh... Cardi B. Damn, no. <laughs> she would have Jeff to be the hype, man. <laughs> Jeff Loomis. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> the uh, Dio, yeah, oh, and, yeah. Uh, fucking. Um, I would go with Portnoy as a drummer. I'm, I know you like Benjini too, but I would have to go with Portnoy. That's just me. Probably be different John, for all of us. John Mi John Young from uh, from Dream Theater, their bassist. I want him. 
Yeah, he wants him. I want him. And then, <laughs> then, then I can see there's a restraining order going on. So Jeff, so the, the Tars would be Jeff Loomis and Steve I with Portnoy and the drums. And uh, fucking Dio is the singer and John Young on bass. Yeah, no. Anyways, uh, let me show you my band. I'm <laughs> just kidding. Yeah. I just no, we're all very different, man. We're all very me. different. Honestly, <laughs> yeah. like, it, it, just call it the me personally, band. I would go with um, Christian Alvestam, which is the singer for a band called Scar Symmetry. Um, I believe they're out of Sweden. Uh, they, were the, they were a very big influence on me growing up. If I don't choose him, I would choose uh, Saja for, or Sahaja or, or however you say his name from the band Raw. I grew up in that with that band, which is freaking awesome. Um, as far as drums go, I would actually choose Joy Jordison because that dude is freaking insane or was freaking insane. Um, on the bass, Billy Sheehan, because he's just a freaking beast. He is a beast. Uh, on guitars, that would be a difficult one for me because I wouldn't want to have too much technicality. I would rather have more soul. Um, so I would have a pre recorded guitar. <laughs> 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 or like Santana or something. I don't know. I, I think it's very <laughs> interesting that none of you added yourself in there. Absolutely, man. No, hell no. Because you don't want to, <laughs> you don't ever want to, you know, get to the point where you're not progressing as a musician anymore. And when you look at yourself um, at the top of the pedestal, that's where you have no room to grow. So I would never consider myself to be the best at what I do in any way, shape or form. There's always room to grow and I will always work to better myself and look for inspiration somewhere else. Really good answer there. Yeah. There you go, boy. Congratulations, head. you just got two points on social media. <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> I, I, I normally ask this question, and if you were on death row, what is your last meal? I know it's a little more morbid and a little dark, but. You know what I would want? I would want some really good sushi. I was gonna say that too. <laughs> like some really good sushi would be awesome, dude. Like some like Philadelphia rolls or like a salmon roll. Yeah, that's fucking nasty. Rainbow roll. <laughs> yeah, awesome, I just bought right? some raw fish. Uh, it's yeah. fine. Yeah. I want Sorry, oysters. we have class. <laughs> <laughs> I want oysters. And you just want a cheeseburger from McDonald's. <laughs> Hell no! I want a fucking filet mignon. That's what yeah. I want. Boy, with macaroni, with a really good macaroni and cheese, man. That sounds fucking nah. awesome to me. <laughs> Potatoes. I'll take a number two. <laughs> I'll take a number two with lettuce and ketchup. Mountain Dew. <laughs> and and tomatoes. Mountain Dew. Want some tomatoes on that? What about you? What would you choose? Yeah, what would you choose? I don't know. Like, I, re- I mean, I'm very simple. Um... Probably lobster, most likely. That's not yeah. simple at all. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, man. We it's like I'll take lobster. I'll take a blue tail lobster from the freaking <laughs> Everglades in Florida. I don't know where they're from. It is it has to be real butter. <laughs> it has to be. I want the butter, want to, be the butter to be turned. Right. In front of me. right? No, no, no. Wait, I, I can't have one bougie moment. <laughs> hey, hey, we're not saying no. I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> you said it was simple. a simple request. <laughs> well, you've been talking to us a while now, so we're just kind of considering you part of the band. I, I don't know if you know how this works between us. But I would like my We're just adding you into the fun. We're blown in. <laughs> I want the call. Just bring me the call. I'll show you what I want. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Do you have a when you go when you guys play? Do you have anything special that you have to have with you? Play, or yeah, like water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe, no, maybe, maybe, I should, maybe I should have rephrased that. Do you have like a lucky charm or lucky charm? Yeah, I or, can't or, play without the certain picks that I use. Well, I mean, I mean, I can play at any pick. But I would be I would be really upset if I didn't have that one particular Honest, set of picks. I just have I to remember to bring have. a pick. So <laughs> my ritual is I just really have to pee. 
<laughs> and before every single show, I gotta five minutes before we go on stage, I have to be near about. So your penis is what you have to bring <laughs> with me at all times. Seems very easy. Whatever, bro. I hold it with both hands. I know. His <laughs> <laughs> day started this. I'm sorry. I'll keep it PG. <laughs> <laughs> Nova Mega is not PG. <laughs> All right, I'll flip the script. Any questions for me? Yeah, man. Um, what how's Jersey like? this time of year? It's cold. What? Wet, cold. It's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's you guys have any questions for him? How long have you been growing that beard? That's what I was going to Really? Yeah. <laughs> you snooze, you lose. I'm going to say, I mean, at least two years or so. Oh, so it's very close to you. You're just hairier. <laughs> everywhere. You would know. You know. I definitely, I've seen him at the pool. God, have you seen this kid try to do a handstand, bro? It's like having beards on his legs. Uh, <laughs> if you were to put a band together, what would you choose? Or who would you choose? And it can't be one of us. It definitely okay. wouldn't be you and your moon head. I fucking rock. <laughs> Fuck yourself. Lead Maybe. Singer, Johnson, lead singer Johnson Davis, backup. Um, Lejean from Seven Dust. Uh, that's a great freaking choice, man. That dude's voice is amazing. For sure. Drummer... Haley Kramer from Pop from Pop Evil. Okay, okay. Probably bassist Fieldy. Oh yeah, you can't go wrong with Fieldy. Maybe Monkey and Head, one or the other. As leads, you you're a big yeah. Corn fan. Very. Okay. Okay. Have you ever seen that band that looks just like them and sounds just like them? Kaoism? Kaoism? Yeah, They're like really famous on face on YouTube right now. Yeah, I've been tagged in literally every time they put something out. <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear Frozen in the background? Yeah. yeah that's my daughter. Let it go. I want to make sure that ambiance that, <laughs> that ambiance is, is getting through. To the, uh, Let it go. <laughs> Just let it go, man. Just let it go. Um, I would like to say, though, that uh really appreciate the interview. Absolutely, man. Uh, we are kind of a pain in the ass to interview. We do banter and end up talking to ourselves a little bit more, and we don't ever usually get to other questions. So if we did, let us know, because that's actually probably the first. <laughs> um, <clears throat> what's that? I said you guys are good. Um, We are playing tomorrow night in Charlotte. At the Amos, we're playing with Islander, Veritel Fury. Scars remain. Scars remains. We're super psyched about that. Um, he talked to you about the festival. What? The festival. First act. Oh, yeah. We have a festival coming up on October 8th and 9th in Lancaster, South Carolina, which is about a 40 minute drive from the big city of Charlotte, uh, North Carolina. There's going to be 20 local bands. When I say local, I mean anywhere from Virginia. South Carolina, North Carolina, some of the bands, uh, local bands around. It's called Brewstock. It's going to be October 8th and October 9th. You have bands like Dying Oath, uh, Fury Until Fury, Redefine, War to Win, uh, War to Win uh, Witness Mark, Will Scars, I, Scars Remain, Waking Terror. So you'll find bands from, like, Rising. from all sides of North Carolina, yeah, all fun. sides of South Carolina, and even Virginia uh, coming together. Two stages, 20 bands, only like 10 bucks per day, 15 for two days. So that's going to be a big one that we have coming up. Then after that, at the end of October, we have a very cool festival in Florida called Friendly Metal 2. Um, that's going to be hosted by the Haunted Honeymooners, which are amazing people. We yeah, got to meet awesome. them at Metal in the Mountains, which shout out to Anthony for Metal in the Mountains. Heck yeah, amazing. we love you, Anthony. Uh, yeah, we're going to be going down to Florida with bands like Dying Oath, uh, We Rise to Fall, Happy Hour Homicide. Really good friends of ours. Uh, we're gonna have some fun and play like a really badass Halloween show on uh, October thirtieth. We yeah. also wanted to give. I want to give a shout out to two nine seven. Two nine seven, absolutely. Show tomorrow night. Yeah, big uh, shout out. We're to them. hoping to be able to. We, we can. 
work with them a little bit more next Absolutely. year. It's it's we have a lot going on, man, and and little by little we have been working hard and we're staying busier and busier uh, as time goes by, and that's really what the goal is to be as busy as possible with this. Uh, yep, selfless promotion time, right? That's that's where we're at. Uh, all of our music's on uh, Spotify. Um, we have YouTube videos. Chris does a lot of weird, goofy shit on YouTube that sometimes has nothing to do with the band, but it's funny as hell. Um, <clears throat> come visit us on Facebook. That's a good way of uh, keeping uh, track of where we're going and what we're doing next. We do have a website, which is www.novomegaband.com. <laughs> You have to say the www. You don't have to say that. What? 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 Does the someone really have That's how the internet works. No, it doesn't. You have to <laughs> if you type in YouTube on your search bar, I did you, do do w- 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 you just w- don't w- know how to internet, okay? Anyways. <laughs> All right, I guess it's still back in 2000. Way, way. Huh? This will be on YouTube later, by the way. Oh, uh, see, Chris, you see? You just don't know how to internet properly. I'm sorry, I didn't get my go, manual. Go back and watch your new manual. Yeah, we didn't get our YouTube manual on the mail yet. I'm so sorry. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyways, I, so sorry, but we got a lot of exciting stuff coming up. Um, we're already looking at booking next year, but we're trying to get with a management company because we're lazy and we don't like booking for clubs. No, really, the management company, we feel, is the best way to go in uh, helping us move forward. There's a lot of things that we don't know, and we understand that. So uh, we're hoping to uh, really play. We, we kind of want to play less shows next year, but the shows to be uh, of more value and quality for not just us, but for our fans and for other bands that we can help support. And we're huge on supporting other bands. Dying Oath is like our sister band. We have played at least what, six shows with them this I got to be a sister. Why can't they just be our friends? <laughs> it's the same. You're going to get canceled. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> Don't fucking interrupt The more you mess with them, his head starts glowing. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I find my way home at night, man. <laughs> You know how, like, all the dark things it takes sunlight to charge them? You know how some people have, like, that little oh. light in their key holder? He just... <laughs> <laughs> he just puts his head forward. But anyways, Dying Oak. You can see, up, guys. You see Josh is in here. Josh! Woo! What? Josh, he says, sister, question mark, question mark? Question mark. Sister, yeah. <laughs> We're mainly thinking about you. Yeah, <laughs> <That's how laughs> we were thinking about everybody but Mindy when we said that. Yeah, Josh, like, damn it. we didn't want to even watch it. We were not gonna, we were not gonna gender you. <laughs> hey, Mindy, hey! Hey, guys. we love you guys. We love Dino. We love them so much. Honestly, yeah, man, we've we've developed a bond with those guys. They're very cool people. They're uh. They're yes. amazing, and they're definitely one of those bands you're going to want to watch out for, to be honest with you, oh, because yeah. I definitely see big things in their future, man. I personally love them all to death and consider them all very close friends personally, and they're not only friends, but they're also an inspiration as well, and we love playing shows with them. They're actually the band that we played with the most this whole year, Yeah, and we've developed a tight relationship. We and, hope to continue that into the next year, because yeah. playing with them... I'm in Haymaker. It's just like like I was saying before. It's so comfortable. It's just like being at home. I, I, Absolutely. I just, Big yeah. things are coming, man. Just don't 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 sleep on Dying Oath, man. They uh, they're gonna be the next big thing. They are for sure. And then we'll be we'll be paying like twenty dollars, thirty dollars a ticket to go see them. <laughs> and it'll be worth it too, because they put on an awesome show. Definitely. You'll be paying thirty dollars. I'll be backstage. You better. Get work. <laughs> Hell, bro! I'll, I'll fucking work tech and like help them out and move gear, man. Bullshit. You're the dummy outside lighting. You're the dummy up on that. You're the dummy in the back that doesn't oh, get to see the band because you're doing shit. Ryan, I love <laughs> Ryan so much. Ryan's fucking awesome. Ryan is the. Oh yeah, man. hands down. If you guys ever meet Ryan Matney, make sure you hug him because he gives. 
the best hugs. Best hugs ever. Best. I'm not even Fucking joking about hugs. this. Straight up. Best hugs. Like, if he doesn't even, like, it's not the ass he, out if, hug or anything like that. It is the full blown like, fucking hug. If if you ask me, who would I rather hug me, my wife or Ryan? I would actually have to think about it. But <laughs> like, that's how much I love his hugs, man. I'm telling you, and it's it's very tight. It's very nice. I hate to keep talking about it. We just we we really do adore them as a band. And as people, we just yeah, they're people. awesome, man. They're they're fucking awesome. I, I love those guys. There's really not enough nice things I could say about oh. them. Honestly, they're they're great. We love them. Right. Compliment, Diego. Check off. <laughs> 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 <Very sorry. laughs> All right, um, yeah. Hey, yeah. now that we have people in the chat live, yeah. you guys have any questions? Like, they fucking know it's like personally, <laughs> yeah. like what my morning routine is. Or what his morning routine is, which we know it's not showering. Can you guess his panty color? (laughs) (laughs) What? I didn't tell you. (laughs) (laughs) The same ones you wore when you almost tried to fall out and lose in balance because you got so scared of heights. Man, uh, honestly, quick story time, quick story time. I am, like, seriously afraid of heights, and it doesn't help that I'm almost 6'2", so I'm, like, constantly dizzy, obviously, you know? And <laughs> we, we wanted to do this photo shoot, and there was – how would you explain that little area? There was, like – River a, Arts District in Nashville. It's, in Nash- like, it's like a rundown area, but it's kind of cool because it's got its own aesthetic. So there's these beams that are going over this river? Or did, I don't want to say a river. It's like a stream. Yeah. But he was so scared. Bro, legitimately, I went, like, so we were taking pictures, right? Had everybody, whole, everybody had no problem. We had to hold hands to get him on. And no joke, we had to hold hands like Girl Scouts <laughs> so that they can get me off this freaking beam. This big ass brown dude that looks like Maui trying to get off this freaking beam scared. <laughs> As hell, shaking and trembling. It's fucking and, classic, man. Bro, and they got a picture of it, too. It's yes, like, we do. <laughs> I'm so afraid of heights, man. I won't ride roller coasters. I'll watch you ride a roller coaster. I'll watch you tell me how cool it is. But fuck your couch. I'm not riding that. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, no joke. I, I get on the line with you, and then I, I'm like that one guy who just like, is the freaking roller coaster and just walks out. <laughs> Yeah, dude, yeah, no way. Yeah, fuck this. Yeah, I'm a gigantic <laughs> vagina when it comes to, <laughs> to roller coasters. It comes to everything. <laughs> it comes everything. To... Yes. Whatever, bro. Whatever. You know, you uh, you lullaby yourself to sleep with my voice. Listen to uh, Forgotten at Night while you rub your uh, bald head. You sounded like fucking... Uh, <laughs> you sounded like the guy from uh, Night at Museum with the monkey. He's like, oh, you're going to go to the key. What's up, Mitchell? Keith, and Natalie, Ryan, everybody on here. Thank you for being on here, guys. Yeah, thank you so much. If you have any questions, if, if, so if you wonder how many times John has to shave his head at night so that he doesn't miss a single hair. <laughs> That's too funny. That is too fucking funny. Seven times. Hey, real quick. So one day we were going to a show, and he's like, all right, man, let's go. I'm ready. He comes outside and he's got one little hair poking up on the top. Dude, of it was the funniest thing ever. He shaved everything, everything. except that one hair. Yeah. And I should have not said anything. <laughs> <laughs> I should have just like, I brought it up and I was like, hey, man, what's that? And he's like, oh, did I miss something? <laughs> obviously, you couldn't see the full moon in his head at that point until he got it off. So it obviously, of we had to. It, it was more of a crisis situation. It had to be averted. I've made that mistake. <laughs> How this I mean, chicken, chicken, chicken chicken Let me ask you a question. What yeah. is your favorite movie of all time? Mallrats. Dude, I hey, just hey, I literally yeah, just watched that like yeah. two fucking days ago, man. I'm really stoked about Clerks 3 coming out, to be honest with you. I'm well, hey, as long as it's as good as the second one, I'm good with it. Uh, the second one was great to me. Kevin James is kind of going on like a fucking tirade, and he's had a lot of flack for a lot of shit because 
Yeah, he's got some issues. I hope that he can yeah. because Clerks Two is fucking amazing. If anyway, I love Clerks One. Out. I think Clerks One's amazing. Yeah, they're both great. Yeah, amazing movies. In Red Bank, they opened up the uh, the restaurant for Clerks Two. Movies, movies. Yeah. You talking about the cow restaurant? They opened up the restaurant. No, you know that I would totally go, man. That's in almost every single Kevin Smith movie. They they opened up that they opened up that restaurant. I'm gonna say two weeks ago, maybe. Oh, I want to go. I haven't got a chance. Where is it at? Has to be. It has to be. I'll send you the address when I have it. I don't. When I go up to New York, I'm gonna try to swing around there if it's in Jersey and hit that up, man. That's fucking awesome. Yeah, fifteen bucks, little man. Put that shit in, in my hand. hand. If nah, the money nah. doesn't show, then you owe me, owe me, oh. <laughs> Jungle love. <laughs> I freaking love that movie. <laughs> I, think, I think it's not that far from the comic book store as well. I think it's really? near. They have a comic book store. I don't even yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. I have no clue at all. Yeah. Yeah. I will tell you one thing, man. Jay and Silent Bob Strikes Back is such an underrated film. And I cannot believe that it went straight to DVD. For those who still watch DVDs, it went straight to DVD. <laughs> like, like I first came I out. own all those movies. Dude, it was awesome. <clears throat> Dogma. I didn't really like Dogma too much, to be honest with you. Really? Yeah. Oh, I love Dogma. Dogma's excellent. Chasing Amy, you know, Chasing Amy was... Chasing was Amy's a great movie. I thought that was more of a serious side. So, I mean, as serious as he's going to get. <clears throat> Yeah. Ball rats is classic. Jungle Love, my Mitchell. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> All right. So how about this? Okay. If you had to choose a movie soundtrack, what's your favorite? And don't say Fast and the Furious. <laughs> no, that would never come out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> See, we're doing the interview now. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's we our turn to blow up. That's kind of hard, but I'm I'm gonna say Forrest Gump. Forrest mm-hmm. Gump. Mandy says Queen of the Damned. That's fair. That I was gonna say that as well, but out of all, there's not one track on there that I would skip. Well, that's not yeah. How I think about it, you know what? Mine would be Frozen. Yeah, I love every song on there. It's that. amazing. Uh, you sometimes see him at night I like with a dress, too. you know, singing to it outside while attracting the moonlight in his forehead and his head. I can sing that song in key all of it. So fuck <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, Moana would be. Silent. You know, actually, you know what was really badass? The original Daredevil soundtrack, because they had that "Bring Me to Life" song by Evanescence. <laughs> okay, that was pretty cool. Okay, to, to go to go to um, what we're talking about. Is there, a, <laughs> is, is there a movie that you wanted to be on that soundtrack? Fuck yeah, Lord of the Rings. I think I think I'm stuck between John Williams composing for Star Wars and John Williams composing for Harry Potter. Okay. Wait, you think Harry Potter too? Yeah, love Harry. Uh, Potter. I was gonna say, yeah, Harry that the Potter. soundtrack for both of those fucking movies. Or what? But the parts that he's had, dude. The crow, the crow was a great soundtrack, Josh. You're right, dude. And Mortal Kombat, you cannot go wrong with Mortal Kombat, dude. It might be a shitty movie, but it's got a good soundtrack. And, and honestly, <laughs> dude, I love the theme talk to Mortal Kombat. I would like yeah. rave to that song all day. I'm telling you. You know what else is a great soundtrack? House of a Thousand Corpses. That's got a decent soundtrack to it too. Really? Yeah. No, it does. Indiana it's Jones. Good. Those usually have really good soundtracks. Hell no. Hell no. We should do a cover of that. We should do a fucking cover of that shit, man. <laughs> Team America is up there pretty good, too. Hey, question for you. Okay. Do, do you like to watch oh, adult cartoons, like, like, you know, funny cartoons for adults, such as South Park, Family Guy, and all that stuff? Yes. What is your favorite, like, adult cartoon? That you could say. I'm gonna say Wow's Burgers. No yeah. shit. There you go, Chris. Now, yeah. what was your favorite Adult Swim cartoon of all time? 
I want to hear everybody's, by the way, on the chat. Everybody's favorite adult swim. Yeah, and you've already put your, you guys already put yourself out there. Now you have to like interact. Yeah, you have to. <clears throat> I'm trying to think that it was technically on Adult Swim. Um, Metalocalypse, uh, Aqua Teen, Aqua Sea Lab, C -Lab the, the Phantom, um, Bleach, yeah. uh, Squid Buddies, Cowboy Bebop, Squid Billy, Squid Billy, sorry. Squid Buddies. <laughs> you said Squid Buddies? <laughs> I did. I, I'm going to have to say Bleach then. That was on. Oh, yeah. That's fair. So you like anime? A little bit. Okay. I'm an I'm anime I'm watcher me. myself. That's why I, I ask. We love a dot swim. I think I would pick Metal Apocalypse just because I like them so much. I and know. I have a lot of respect for everybody that's in that. Like the people that he put together Dude, for that band's amazing. Robot Chicken is pretty badass. Robot Chicken C is badass. C man. Lab Cookie is the best. Monster. C Lab twenty. 2021. Yeah. C Lab is hands down the fucking best show that has ever been, <sighs> ever to exist, ever. Mailbox head. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Yeah, Sue Web. Sue Web's pretty good. Yeah. I, you know, I really like uh, Robot Chicken, though. Watching the Cookie Monster you know what it attack is? the keyboard ops. Right? You have to. You it, have there's nothing to, like it. The thing is that you have to be a certain age to be able to get yeah. Robot Chicken and like it. That's the thing. Like, and it's, it's, like, only good at doses. Like, I can't. No, watch. I think it's great. I would watch Robot Their Chicken Their Star Wars version was fucking awesome. But man. you have to be a certain age to be able to get all the references, and you're not going to enjoy it if you don't get all the no, references. No, he's right, because there's a lot of, like, 80s cartoons right. that they pull into that. Right. Like He-Man and all that stuff. You know, I found out as I grew up, like, like even with Family Guy, it didn't get any funnier when I figured out references or anything like that to me. And actually, I really hate the new Family Guy. Old Family Guy. The old Family way Guy better. is the shit. Yeah, way better. Do the wacky inflatable. Wacky inflatable on Floyd Dolan. Wacky inflatable on Floyd Dolan. I'm Al Darren. And Al Harris is wacky inflatable on Floyd Dolan. Wow, wow, before him. And I'm ready to best seven of you. <laughs> yeah, that's what we Sorry. do on our spare time. <laughs> I kind of fucked it up. What's your favorite Saturday morning cartoon? Morning cartoons. That's a good one. Dude. You're talking oh, old school God. or like today's? Danny no, I'm talking old school. Uh, so. <laughs> What's that? I'm talking old school, like 80s, 90s. Man, that's freaking good. Curse the Cowardly Dog, yeah, Ed and Eddie. Uh... Dexter's Laboratory, bro. That was, that was one of them. One. That, that for me, I would watch that like all the time. Dexter's Red and Stim Laboratory. I'm older, so Red and Stimpy. I like the old uh, Looney Tunes. Tom and Jerry's probably and hands Jerry. down. My SpongeBob, favorite. man. SpongeBob. Old SpongeBob, though. Like, man. like season one, two, and three, and then the rest are garbage. I relate with Patrick <laughs> a lot. Speaking of SpongeBob, never do the drinking game. Wait, what? The drinking game for SpongeBob. There's a drinking game for SpongeBob. There's a drinking game for everything. <laughs> so pretty much, pretty much, whenever you see a bubble, you drink. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> or anytime he goes, <laughs> <laughs> so you're hammered like three quarter, uh, quarter of the way. Yeah, you, you can't so even get through fucked. an episode. Yeah, man. you're fucked. <laughs> Pretty much. Unless you were selling chocolate. Later, Mitchell. Thank you for joining in, brother. Thank you. <sighs> I'm gonna so have what to say. What is your favorite attire when you go to bed at night? <laughs> What? <laughs> He's basically asking if you sleep with clothes or naked. He like he Whoa. wants to have some dreams tonight. He's just I'm trying to get some <laughs> some material. Clothes. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> like, he He's about to get specific. No, He's like, like <laughs> boxers or briefs. <laughs> no, but it was funny because. He heard it, and then he paused for a second, and he's like, "What?" And look, he's wearing a, a freaking Giants I know. hat, dude. That's all he freaking wears every single freaking day: Yankees hat, freaking Giants hat. It's annoying. <laughs> it's, it's the same two fucking hats, too. It's not like an array of hats. It's two hats. So you're the so you're the Karen of hats. No, it's just like buy some more hats. No, it's okay, Karen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's okay, Karen. Yeah. It's fine. Some Listen, people wear one hat every day. For once, they never wear your hat one. starts looking like oh, a Oh, no, I like it when they look like And shit. smelling like ass. No, I wash it. Maybe you should go to Lids. I actually wear them when they're Walmart torn apart. sells hats. No, I like them when they're torn apart. I think they look more like I don't understand why, though. I like them when they're torn apart. I understand. Mm. It's really about. He loved everything torn apart, if you know what I'm saying. 
<laughs> no, I mean, right. it, I mean, you know, think about it, right? Like, you're able to relate to it better, and you're like, oh, my God, I've had all these memories with this. He calls it experience. It's called exactly. comfortability. <laughs> right, yeah. It's called fuck off. We all, have, like, hey, we, all have our, we all have our one thing that we always wear. Or... That's, yeah, that's pretty much it. It's true. That, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's why he's sitting like that, because he's still wearing the same dildo he put on this morning. I have a six inch or just for you. Some people, you know, use fists. You talk John about uses dildos. Just a man. You turn around <laughs> to me. You turn around to me and you're like, you know what, dude? You always make it fucking weird. You always make it weird. And then look at the shit that's coming. Bro, out your you mouth. made it weird an hour ago when you walked in. <laughs> that that could be true, but I don't understand why you're adding on to it. I'm sorry. You're right. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> See, this took, this took a turn. He's all over here like, I can't believe I had this guy's on. <laughs> you should be around us when we're drinking. We're all sober right now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Natalie. Even our girlfriends walk away from this. Or, and my wife, they're like, nah, we're not dealing with this shit. When they see it's like this, they don't even fucking bother. <clears throat> Same thing in the bedroom. Yeah, because we're going to start teasing them, too. Yeah. <laughs> Is there anything else you guys want to announce or promote or? Yes, he will be thinking about you and boxers tonight. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> kidding. I'm kidding. So we do. <laughs> Isn't he a dick? He's a sorry. dick. Man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh man, we wanna we wanna promote. Uh, we have new music coming out very soon. Uh, so make sure you check us out on Spotify, iTunes Music, every streaming platform out there. Uh, we want to give a huge shout out to the people who have been there from us and do help us on the everyday uh, struggle that it is to being a musician, such as, you know, Dying Oath, bands like Award of Wind and Fear of Design, Home for the Day, all those guys, you know. <laughs> Fear thank you Fury. so much. Fear Until Fury, Scars Remains, all those guys. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much. Uh for being who you are and doing what you do. Um, Thank you for dealing with us. Absolutely. Uh, we also, just, you know, don't sleep on us, man. Uh, I would say give us a shot. I would guarantee you that you listen to some of our music and you may not like one song, but I'm pretty sure the next one is going to be a complete surprise to you because none of our music sounds very much like it all sounds like song. Nova Omega, yeah. but we really go out of the way to make sure that each song is sounds tailored different. to itself. Correct. Uh, we we don't we we want there to be a new listening experience every time somebody listens to a new song. Correct. Uh, in all seriousness, I mean that's we we put a lot of thought in that when we write. Correct. Um, like, is this rhythm too close to this rhythm? It is. You know what? We're gonna put that aside. Maybe we'll workshop it later. But let's move on. And give give these people something new. Last um, thing I want to say: uh, tomorrow we get to be in Charlotte uh, with opening for Island there, also playing with a couple of our buddies in Scars Remains and Fear Until Fury. Right after that, October eighth and October 9th, we have Brewstock. After that, we get to go to West Virginia with our buddies in Happy Hour Homicide. We get to play the Rec Center out there. Um, we also, after that, get to go to Florida to play Friendly Metal. Um, so we have a very, very busy October month. We don't have much going on after that for the end of the year. We do have one local show in Nashville, December 4th. So if anybody's trying to check out Novo Omega locally in Nashville, that is definitely the time to do it. Um, and one very last shout out that I would like to do a very special person who ever since the moment that we met him, he's really been a huge supporter of us. Um, Rad Ray from the band MX, the American Men. Thank you so much for everything that you do, brother. You are definitely part of our family and we appreciate everything that you do brother um also me and chris play exclusively ibanez guitars uh so if they want to send us new guitars so we can move ibanez forward in their <laughs> advertising we would be most willing to do that for because we're cool like that we're fucking cool guys yeah definitely well, like, anybody tell you we're fucking cool just send me a couple free guitars yeah a couple customs it's okay uh, it's you know we'll be fine chris plays <laughs> on a uh, mark IV Mesa boogie um, I play out of Angle Power Bar 2. Um, we use Mesa Cabs, V30s, and that's way more important than anything Nestor had to say. 
Okay. Hey, you like to add out a computer? I play a bass. There we go. It's just a bass. Yeah. That's all he does. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> and his hair is really big, so when he yeah. moves, you can't see his face anyway. So yeah. he is yeah. literally yeah. like that. He is the bassist with no name. You oh, can't see his no. face. It doesn't fucking his matter. His name is Steve. Oh, it's Steven. Yeah, yeah we call Steven. him Steven. His name's Steven. Steven. Well, this conversation got a little far-fetched from that uh, last <laughs> question you had. And that's, that's what, what we wanted to announce. His name is Steven. Steven. Yeah. Steven. We're changing his name from Garrett to Steven. No, it was never changed. His name has always been Steven. Did, well, where did the Garrett come from? It was Garrett a mistake by his parents. Yeah. 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 Okay, no, that's fair. They that's fair. Up. Parents fucked up his name, but his real name is Steven. Yeah, I'm good with that. He was abandoned as a pup and found by Muriel. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so at this time, I'm going to thank you guys for coming. And thank uh, you, man. Thank, thank you so much, Rob. So we appreciate you, man. I'll talk to you in a couple of days. Thanks, everybody that showed up too. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Have a good night, guys. Peace out. Have a good tomorrow.